You alright lads and lasses, Jacobs here and welcome back to another video. If you've been around this channel for a while, you may remember this video with a gem of a thumbnail. If you watch it, you may remember I said this towards the end of the video and the start of the outro. By the way, my setup is prone to getting possibly updated in the future but this is what I have for now. So over a year later, I've decided to update my setup. Sort of. It's primarily the PC that's been upgraded, alongside a minor upgrade featured on my Xbox One setup. The first few minutes of this footage is basically going to be my old video, as most of it is more or less the same. It's a valid excuse for laziness, so feel nostalgic. By the way, this video is going to be my last one in 2018. Anyway, here I'm going to show you the Jackup setup for 2019. To start off this video, I'll first show you my PC monitor, webcam and then my Blue Yeti microphone. This monitor is a 24 inch LG TV because it has built in speakers and a free view tuner and it's capable of displaying my desktop at 1080p max resolution at 60Hz, and it's quite reliable in my opinion. The device on top of the screen is a Trust webcam. It was advertised that it could capture footage in 1080p at 30fps, however when I tried it out for myself, it was more like in 480p at 15fps. That's why I don't really use facecam in my videos anymore. The, the device to my left is my Blue Yeti Vintage White Edition microphone. Now features such as a port to plug in my headphones, a dial for volume control, a dial for audio gain, and a dial for what mode I want my audio in. And it came with a gooseneck to hold the microphone next to my face to get good quality audio, and a pop filter to prevent those annoying p sounds. Moving on to my desktop accessories, I have myself here a Mad Cat Cyborg V5 gaming keyboard, a Mad Cat Rat 3 mechanical gaming mouse, a Huion drawing tablet, a wireless Xbox controller adapter, and a Belkin wireless Wi-Fi dongle. The keyboard features a red light, which obviously makes it easier to game when it's night time, and four buttons on the side capable of lowering, increasing and muting the volume, and a button to toggle the keyboard light on and off. My mouse on the other hand features four additional buttons that a regular mouse wouldn't have, that make PC gaming a better experience. Despite the mouse looks a bit odd, I find it surprisingly more comfortable than a regular mouse. Next in line, my Who I Own drawing tablet which I only use for Photoshop work to customise my thumbnails for YouTube. After that, there is my Xbox wireless adapter, which I use to connect my Xbox controller to my PC in case I find my keyboard and mouse a pain in the ass to use, and therefore I can switch to my controller alternative. To finish off my desktop accessories tour, there is the Belkin wireless Wi-Fi dongle. The primary source of my PC's internet is supplied through an Ethernet cable which runs from my PC and through the walls towards my main router. Despite this is a good way of internet connectivity, the cable does sometimes refuse to work, which can also be a pain in the ass. As an internet backup, I have my trusty Belkin Wi-Fi dongle to keep my PC running on internet if my Ethernet cable for whatever reason refuses to work. Moving on to my console setup, I have myself an Xbox One console and a Technica 32 inch TV. My console is just a standard 500GB Xbox One, which I use to play games with my console friends. On the other hand, I have a second TV for my Xbox One and for general watching freeview purposes, which I don't do often. The TV also displays in 1080p at 60Hz, however gathering that Technica is Tesco's own brand of TV and that the TV is older than the LG one, the TV for my PC gaming setup is superior. With all that out of the way, allow me to show you what I'm proud of. This here is my new gaming PC. Obviously it's very different compared to what I had back in 2017. Just look at this for a comparison. For any PC enthusiasts, and I'm not talking about political correctness, you're probably curious of what the specs are for this beast. Allow me to serve you these specs in no particular order. The case, or what you're looking at right now, is the Corsair Carbide Spec Omega RGB in black and white. This case features a strip RGB LED and the front of the case along with two Corsair HD 120 RGB fans. One at the front and one at the back of the case. The case has a nice modern look and you can witness your components in action through a tempered glass window on the left. I'd say the only downside to this case is the fact that you'll need the included Allen key to undo these screws rather than the conventional screwdrivers or the kind of screws you can undo with your hands. Although I'd imagine this design choice was intentional because it helps with the aesthetics. There's also a program called IQ that allows you to control these RGB headers. You can change the colour as well as the colour motion in both the strip and the fans. 
The CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 2700X processor. It's running at the stock clock speed of 3.7 GHz. It features 8 cores and 16 threads, so I do have quite a lot of power on my hands. Its closest Intel alternative, I think, is the Intel i7-8700K. It's more of a workstation CPU, but it's brilliant for gaming as well. Not to mention, it also has a faster rendering time for Sony Vegas Pro, so there's another plus. The CPU cooler is the AMD Wraith Prism, which came with the Ryzen 7 2700X. It features an RGB fan which looks great, while it cools and helps the CPU run at those sweet and high frame rates. I think the RGB can be changed, but not with the IQ software, as it's an AMD product. The GPU is an EVGA GeForce GTX 1063GB. It's a solid mid-range card capable of playing many game titles at 1080p and 60fps or above. Coupled with my new Ryzen CPU, I was able to play GTA Online at an average of 115fps, compared to my old AMD FX6300 CPU, which can only average out at 49fps. But that CPU is an old entry level processor from 2012, so it wasn't the card's fault. My motherboard is the Eoeris, I don't know how to pronounce that, X470 Ultra Gaming Motherboard. I've also heard bad things about this motherboard, but it's done my setup great so far. It features all sorts of slots, an AM4 slot for AMD Ryzen 1000-2000 series processors, 4 slots for DDR4 RAM, RGB strips, 2 M.2 SSD slots, 6 SATA ports and many more. Just like the Corsair RGB fans and strip, the colour can be changed in the motherboard's LED strips using the software which came with the driver installation CD. My RAM is two sticks of 8GB Vengeance LPX DDR4 each running at 3000MHz, so in total I have 16 gigs of RAM. For 2018 standards, it's a nice amount of RAM. Unlike my old two sticks of 4GB HyperX DDR3 RAM each running at 1600MHz, I could have upgraded to the RGB versions, but they are out my budget. Not much to say about this next component, but my PSU is the Zenta ATX 700W non-modular. Pretty basic power supply with a lot of upgrade room. That's all I can say. This PC also features two SSDs on one hard drive. My first SSD is a SATA SAN disk. I'm unsure which type it is though. It has 120 gigs of storage and it's used as a boot drive. My second SSD is the SATA variant of the Crucial MX500. It has a whopping 1TB of storage and it uses to store pretty much everything else on. This includes my Steam library and editing software. The lonely hard drive is a CK Barracuda 500GB 7200.11. It has a speed of 7200rpm, as mentioned in the name, and it's the oldest part of my PC, from 2007. It's just used for storing my recorded videos on, so not much usage. My GPU, two SSDs, PSU and hard drive all came from my old build. This build I'm proud of in particular, not just because of its performance and looks, but also because I made it. My last build was made by a local builder. For my first proper build, I really love it and I'm quite happy with the result. Anyway, that's all I have time for today. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe and share this video. Also be sure to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server and click the little bell icon for notifications based on my latest videos. This is Jack Ops and I'll see you in the new year.